everyone, it's Tina from the Scrap and Rabbit blog and today I'm going to show you how to make a shaker card for a baby shower theme. This card here I made a while back and it is for a little girl and I got a lot of questions about this card so I thought I'd go ahead and make another one and show you guys how I did it. This one here is using the Crafton Desert Divas Wildly Cute stamp set. That's where this little zebra is from. And so I'm going to use a different image. I'm going to actually make one today using the little giraffe. And so I already stamped him and I colored him and he's just so cute. And this little giraffe is from the mini set called So Long. And so we're going to do a card today with him and I'm going to make it for a baby boy. So there, it'll be a variation on this one that you guys asked me about. So th as you can see, there are some sequins in here and they shake around a bit. So there's a little shaker here behind the baby and this scallop circle card opens up here at the top. And I haven't stamped anything in here yet because I usually wait till I'm going to give it away so that I know specifically what I want to say before I stamp the inside. But here's the card, and so we're going to go ahead and make another one using this little giraffe so I can show you guys how I did it. For my card base, I used the Cricut Art Philosophy cartridge for this scalloped circle. And you can have it open to the side. I'm going to do it to where it opens this way, to where the fold is at the top of the card. I cut a few layers out. And I'm going to use this pretty teal color to go like that. And then I have this pretty paper here. It's got these glitter stripes. I don't know if you could see that. It's really pretty. But it has baby colors to where you could do boy or girl. But since I'm going to be focusing on a boy, I'm going to try to make it a little more masculine. Now for this cut here, when you're doing a shaker, all you need is to make sure that you have a window so that you can see your sequins through. And so what I did on Design Space was, as you can see, this is basically the center cut of this circle right here. So I just did two circles. This was one of them, and then I did a second circle. And then I sliced this part and I sliced this part to get a centerpiece that looks like this. And see it goes right along and it fits right there in the center of the circle. And then what I did was I took a rectangle and I sliced the little window and then this baby is from the Cricut Cartridge Artiste and what I did was I sized it in the little window and then I welded it so that it's welded at each of these points here. And then that, that way you can have a window that has a word in it. And so for this one, since it's a baby shower, I did baby. And then the white is a background so that you can see baby through, because otherwise if this kind of makes it a little too busy and a little bit harder to see the word when you have the sequence behind it. So this way, You'll see the sequins and then you will still see the word baby. So that's how I got these cuts here. Feel free to ask me any questions if I'm not making myself clear. I'm happy to help you guys out. So you can leave me a message on my blog or here on my video. But that's basically what I did was I cut this layer, I cut this layer, and then these two. And then so it's going to go together like that and opposite of my zebra card because with the zebra facing this way I have the zebra looking at baby and so with the giraffe since the giraffe is facing the other way I moved the baby over to the left okay so now that you have all your elements for your card I also cut some additional pieces and these will go on the inside I inked up this one, the white one, to have it pop out just a little bit more. And this will go 
as an inside layer for my card. Okay, so that is what I use to make the card base. To make the shaker portion of my card, I used my new fuse tool from We Are Memory Keepers. You don't have to make a shaker with this tool, but I'm going to show you how it can be very convenient. So this isn't plugged in right now, so it's not hot right at this very second, but uh, these little spikes here on this wheel will basically roll across plastic and seal, make a little pouch. And that's what this is. This shaker card is a sealed little pouch. And I still, you still need to use a little bit of foam tape to pop up this second layer. And the sequins, depending upon how many you put in there, will shake around. I find that they don't shake around as much as when you're using foam or foam tape but having that little pouch can make it really easy and you can pack in a lot of sequins so that they can really stand out, which is what I wanted for this card. So basically what you need is some plastic and the plastic that I use that works really well with the fuse tool. So let me show you what I use. I use these standard weight sheet protectors from Avery. Now they have thicker ones and they also have thinner ones. I would not get the thinner ones. I think that this is as thin as you should go. And if you really want a thicker, more sturdy pocket, depending upon what it is that you're making, I would go with even a heavier weight. But the standard weight works perfect for cards and for making shakers. So what I do is I measure out the size pocket that I'm going to need. And in this case, it's pretty small. It's this so piece for right this here. Piece, I'm going to want about three inches this way so that it goes a lot. I'll be able to adhere that pouch to the back. And then for this way, I'm not going to want it to stick out on the ends, so I'm going to want it to be just within the window here. And so I'm going to say about one and one, two, three, four, five eighths one and five eighths and if I want to be exact I could say one and three quarters but anything more than that then your plastic will be sticking out on the edges. Here are some examples of shaker cards that I've made using this fuse tool. So I made this one with my Cricut as well and basically I have the word happy here and then the window to the side. And the neat thing about the fuse is that it can go, your shaker can go all the way to the edge of the card. And you can have, you can see where the dotted lines are. This is where the wheels sealed the plastic. And so depending upon how many sequins you put in there will determine what kind of a shake you get. But I packed this again so that it, they could be bright beneath the word happy. Here's another one that I did with a little ocean and the same thing I, I cut these separated these two pieces and made a little one inch area to seal these sequins in for shaker and then here's one that I did where I basically took my tool and I did an outline of this tag which is from Craft and Desert Divas Essential Tags Dice and it's it's a perfect size die to use just for tags or to add an element to your card like I did here. And this one I packed full of sequins. I really wanted it to be really sparkly and pretty. And then I basically sealed around the area with the fuse. So this is just gives you an idea of some of the sh types of shakers you can do using your fuse tool, which is what I used again for this one. I found the easiest way to cut the sheet protectors is just with my paper cutter. And so I'm going to measure out three and a quarters inch, three and a quarter inch this way. And let's see, one and three quarters this way. I think 
think that's what I measured. I hope so. And then that gives me my little piece of plastic that's going to make my pouch. So here's my little piece, and then I can hold it behind the window and see that this is going to work just fine as long as I line it up right when I glue it. And if there are any little edges that do stick out, you can always take your scissors and trim them. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to be sealing the edges. Now one is on the fold, so I'm not going to need to seal that edge. But then there's three open edges. And so what I'll do is I'll seal two sides and leave one side open, room to fill it with my sequins, and then once I have as many sequins as I need, then I will seal that last side, okay? I don't plug in my fuse tool until I know I'm gonna be using it because it's very easy to forget about it and leave it on. And I really don't wanna set my craft room on fire. So I usually plug it in right before I know I need to use it. And just keep in mind, this tip, it gets extremely hot. So you don't wanna touch it and you don't want it against anything that it can destroy. So like I said, I know I'm going to be using it to do this pocket, so I just plugged it in, and it's going to take a few minutes to warm up. And as soon as I'm done with it, I'm going to unplug it. So here's my sealed side on the bottom. So I'm going to want to seal this side and this side, and then I'll fill that part in with the sequins. I use this piece of cardboard, any cardboard, because this is so hot that it actually will melt your mat. And I don't have, I didn't purchase the glass mat that they recommend. I have enough mats, people. I don't need a glass one. <laughs> and the piece of cardboard works just fine. And I can use this ruler to be my guide. Okay, my fuse tool is heated up and I have my ruler lined up with where I need the little notches. And I'm going to go ahead and roll it right across. Sometimes it doesn't do the notches all the way down and you can just go on over it again and it's fine. And if you look, it's sealed this side completely. Isn't that cool? I love this thing. Okay, so let's do this next side and then we'll fill it up with our sequins. Okay, so when I go to fill my little pouch with sequins, I know this probably seems silly, but I found that my scissors actually hold the little pouch Perfect, and then I can just drop them in there. And so with my card, with the colors that are on the cardstock, I decided to go with a little bit of this Emerald Isle sequins and then the Mermaid Lagoon. I use all of Craft and Desert Diva sequins. I think that they have the best mixes. And this one, I'm actually gonna do a mix of some of the mixes to match this uh, card base for my card. And I took some of the purple out of the pixie dust sequins that I used for the zebra. This one was just the pixie dust mix, which is so pretty and it's got so many cute things in there. I just went ahead and pulled out some of the purple sequins and stars and set them on here and they're going to go right inside my little pouch here. And that gives it a little bit of purple, but not too much because this is going to be for a boy. So I'm gonna add some of these blues and teals. There's not blues on my card base, but there is teal. And so I'm just gonna throw a bunch of sequins in here until I feel like I have enough. And I do make a complete mess when I do this, and I'm sure there are better ways to do this. But I like to see what's going on, and I don't wanna pour too much in, and it's better if I go a little bit at a time, and then that way, I don't have to pull them out, especially since these are from different mixes and I don't want to have to try to put them back in their perspective bags. But anyways, I'm just 
filling my little pouch up and I'm going to make it nice and pretty and sparkly. Can never have enough sparkle. You see, you can kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like. And then I can put my little baby over it like that. Isn't that pretty? And then over, actually, the white. And you can see it better. So that's actually a pretty good amount. A little bag of sequins goes a long way, let me tell you. Although I really need more. I need to I need to get more sequins. I'm running out. I love to make shaker cards and I've used up so much of them. All my mixes are pretty low. I've actually finished a few. So I think that looks pretty good. Let's see. I almost touched that. <laughs> I almost touched this and burned myself. I scared myself there. So just remember that it's there and it's hot and you don't want to touch it. Let me just put a little bit more of this in there. And then I think I've got enough. Okay, so when you think you've got enough in there, you're going to go ahead and seal it shut. So I'm going to grab my ruler again, try to move them over to one side. There you go. And the ruler is not going to lay flat because there's sequins underneath it, and that's okay. Just put some pressure so that you know you're going to get a good seal. And then go ahead and roll across. And that rolled through perfectly that time. And there you go. You have your little shaker pouch. Isn't that fun? I love that. Okay, so then that's going to go behind baby. So now we have everything we need to make our cards. We just got to put it all together. But first, I'm going to unplug this so I don't set my craft room on fire. Okay, so I put together all of the different card layers, both inside and out. We had our teal, our patterned, and then the background of what the shaker's gonna be. So we have our little pouch, and then we have our little baby window. So on the back side of the baby window, I'm gonna go ahead and put some adhesive down, and this is going to hold the pouch in place. So I have the adhesive there, and then I'm gonna wanna line up my pocket. So, the best way to do this is to be right above it. I know if I do that, you guys are going to see the top of my head. So let me just line it up the best I can right here. It's measured exactly, so if I go to the bottom, it should be just fine. And like I said, if you do have anything sticking up at the top, then you can always just trim it with your scissors. So there we go. And there's our little shaker. So now, even though you do have your shaker in a pouch, you're going to still need, I guess you could glue it down like that, but then you're going to have it kind of uneven and a little bit wonky. So you're going to still need to pop it up with some foam tape. And then it also gives it a little bit more dimension when you do that. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut some off and place it where I need to. So put down some foam tape and then now when I go to put it down, it will lay much more even. And so all I got to do is take this off and glue it on. Okay, now we have all of our card elements put together and so now we need to just finish it off with our embellishments. So I was trying to figure out how I wanted to do this one because this one I did lots of pearls and prima flowers and of course it's very feminine so for a little boy I wanted it to be 
a little less feminine. So I just decided to maybe add a little bit of burlap. I thought he looks really cute with that. And maybe some buttons instead of the flowers. So I went ahead and got together some embellishments and then I'm gonna play with it a little bit and see what I come up with for my final design. Okay guys, here's a look at my final card. I used buttons and burlap to make it more for a little boy. And I decorated the inside as well with a few little buttons with a little burlap to carry over the theme to the inside. So much like my zebra one where I carried over the little flowers and the pearls, I kept it with buttons and burlap. Now when it comes to making masculine cards, I consider myself very challenged. I feel like I'm, I'm much better at doing the feminine ones, but I think this one came out cute and it's for a baby. So I hope you liked it and I hope that I helped you figure out how you could do your own shaker using the We Are Memory Makers Fuse tool with a little bit of the sheet protectors. And um, oh, just so you know, I did add some sparkle. I couldn't help it. I, I like sparkle. I used my Wink of Stella pen for that to give the baby a little bit of sparkle. So there you go. So there's my feminine zebra and then for a little girl and then one for a little boy. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you'll stay tuned because I will be filming another one shortly. Thanks again everyone. Happy crafting. Mm -hmm.